In some of our previous videos, I showed you four ways of getting a true or false answer. So basically four types of logical tests. The first one was just a basic one with only one test. Then I showed you an OR formula where you can input as much logical tests as you want. And then if one of them is true, then the whole result will be true. I showed you the AND formula where everything must be true. All the logical tests must be true, then the whole result will be true. And I showed you the ease error formula where it will test if a certain cell has an error or not. Now all of these four formulas gives you an answer of true or false. Now in a normal situation you can't do too much with true or false. But you can normally do a lot more with an if formula. So how does an if formula work? It basically takes a logical test and takes either the true or false answer and you can do anything there. So for example, let's open the formula function bar. So my first field here is the logical test. So this will look exactly the same, except obviously the equal sign, but it will look exactly the same as the four types of log logical tests that we've done. Then, if my logical test is true, remember if we're using an AND formula, then all the logical tests must be true. Then the next field is, as you can see there, a value if true, then if the logical test is true, then you can do something. If it's false, then do something else. So let's do a very simplistic example. So, let's just start the if formula. So I'm going to the formula function bar. So I'm going to test if A2 is equal to 1. So now you can see that's a logical test. And this logical test is true. So, value if true. So what should we do if it's true? Let's type in text. Is equal to 1. That will be... So already you can see the formula result is the true result because it is true. The false, we can say, is not equal to 1. So now we know the result is because there is 1. So the result is true. If I change it to 2, then the result is false. So now my logical test is A2 equal to 1. No, A2 is not 1, it's 2, so it's false. Then we're skipping value if true because it's not true. Then we'll go to value if false. So value if false is text. Now you can substitute anything in here. You can do another formula, for example. You can select another cell. So let's say we want to select C2 if it's true. If it's false, we want to select C3. So now let's type in 3 or 4 there. So can you see? It will then change accordingly. So that's the basic principle of doing an if formula. Let's go do another better example. So in this example, I want to only return the sales values if the month is equal to January. So how do we do this? Let's start an if formula. Let's go in the formula function bar. So here's where the formula function bar becomes very important. So what's my logical test? I want to test if this cell is equal to January. So a few things here. Firstly, I'm referring to text, so I need to put this text into inverted commas. If I just do January, it will give me an error there because Excel doesn't know what January means. So we have to put it in inverted commas. The next thing, I can't go and select the whole column A. Because in any IF formula, you can only test one cell at a time. That's a very important principle. So for example, if I do A4 up until A11, then it, it will give me a million on uh, answers. So it's only one cell at a time. So what should we do if the month is January? Then we want the sales. So then we click on B4. If it's false, if the month of January isn't standing there, we want zero. So we're going to test if A4 is equal to January. If it's true, we're going to return the sales value. If it's false, 
we're going to say zero. So there we can already see the first one is working because we've got January there. So now let's just make the format right. So now we can just copy down. When you copy down, when you stand in the right hand corner, the bottom, you just you get this, you see this cross coming up there. Just double click on it and it will copy to the end. And now we've got the same formula everywhere. Now if we typed in January there with, with a space, then it won't work. Because although it looks the same, it's not the same. January there is three characters, but January there, you can see spaces there. Now for Excel, this is two different words. So in, for Excel purposes, it's not the same. So it won't work. Let's do another example. So in this example, we want to test if the sales is less than 500. And then we only want to return the sales that's less than 500. So how do you do this? I'm going to say if I'm going to open the formula function bar. So what's my logical test? Remember one cell at a time and we're currently standing on row 4. So we want to test row 4's information. So I want to test if the sales value is less than 500. So I'm not starting with the equal sign. So what should we give if it's true? Then I want the sales value. If it's false, I just want to return 0. So now if I say OK, so that's not over 500, then I just go to the bottom here, I see the cross, and I double click. And there we are. So now you can only see. So if I change something here to be less than 500, then it will pop up in the, the columns there. So this is a, a basic if formula with one logical testing. In the next few videos, I will show you how to combine more than one logical test into those examples.